Amen. Well, several years ago, when I was just a little kid, you may not know, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and my family and I, we lived in this apartment complex, and the apartment complex was owned by the church we attended. And my dad, he was involved in ministry and missionary evangelism, but he was also the head of security. He oversaw the property and the grounds. And one night, he received a phone call that somebody had broken into the area that housed the church buses. There was a burglary in progress. So dad told the person on the other line, call the police. And I'm going to go check it out. So dad went flying out of the apartment into the area where the buses were. And I'm sure, I, I just wish we had a, a, a video of this, all right, to see dad, you know, like going around and seeing, seeing what's going on. And he went and he peeked around one of the buses, and sure enough, there was somebody stealing parts. Dad didn't know if he was armed. He didn't know if maybe there were others. He just knew it was his responsibility to stop this dude. So he leaned up on the bus, and he was kind of peeking around the corner. I'm sure his hands were to support his, his weight, but then something happened. Dad slipped, and he tripped, and he fell right into the line of sight. The burglar was just straight ahead. So he had, he had to think fast. He didn't know what to do. So he put both hands out in the shape of a gun, and he said, freeze! <laughs> and the burglar said, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. And he said, back into the line. Okay, okay, don't, don't shoot. Get against the bus. Don't shoot. Put your hands on the bus. Spread out. So this guy is like this on the bus, and Dad is holding him down with his handgun. <laughs> Pun intended. Now, just about that time, thank God for the police. <laughs> so the first car pulls in. The cop comes flying. You cover me while I cuff him. Dad didn't have a chance to say anything. That police went right up and, and, and first that dude put him in cuffs. Turned around to my dad. I, you know, my dad's like, oh, boy. All right. Then there were more police cars. I've been told there were four police cars and a helicopter overhead shining its light down on this guy. And, of course, finally, the officer that got there first says to my dad, but it's a good thing you were armed. And dad said, well, I wasn't armed like you think I was armed. Yes, I had a handgun, but it was my hand. <laughs> thank, God, thank God for the, for the Holy Ghost and for his angels. Uh, I told the story recently, and somebody came up to me and, and said, I didn't even tell, tell you this, dad, but somebody said, man, <laughs> boy, his angels, he put them to work, didn't he? <laughs> Because, you know, Psalms 91 says that God gives his angels charge over us. All right? He watches over us. And, I mean, Dad probably had them working overtime, right? Praise the Lord. The young man was not armed. And Dad found out the police, he was a teenager. He was in, in a class, mechanical class, and he was stealing parts for, for his class. He'd never been in trouble before. But first of all, my dad told the, told the police that he, he wasn't armed. And, boy, did they get a kick out of that. All right? So he's like, I, they went and told, hey, come here, come here. And he told the story to everybody, and they were all just a hooting and a hollering, right? They were just a laughing. So then the officer in charge, where there was a sergeant or captain, I don't know, he came up to Dad and said, now listen, this, is, this guy's a teenager. He's never been in trouble before. Do you want to press charges? And Dad said, no, just give him a good scare. And he was like, oh, I'll give him a good scare. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to tell him, you see that guy over there? He could have shot you dead. <laughs> now, there is a point to this story. In that moment, when my dad fell out, he had to think fast, and he, and he put his hands out. His hands were a weapon. 
not like what is expected and not like what's in, encouraged. <laughs> but it worked out because his hands, because this burglar thought his hands were gun, he knew there was authority behind that gun. So he was willing to comply. He was obedient until the police came with the real guns. My point is, our hands are weapons. When you fold them together and you pray, you move the hand of God. And the hand of God moves the world. There is power in prayer. How many believe that? There's power. So we can take, we don't have to point him in the shape of a gun, but we can bring him together. But not only that, we can also put our hands out like this. And when we lift them up and we worship God, our worship becomes a weapon that can literally rescue you from your circumstances. We find in Scripture where people literally, they worshiped their way out of a wilderness, out of a jail cell, out of depression. This is why the Word says that you put on worship like it's a garment. It's like a coat. You put on a coat of praise because it says it lifts the spirit of heaviness. So when you're discouraged and you're despondent and you're desperate for a move of God, God says, take that gun, take those hands, and lift them up and worship me and watch what I will do. He will literally give you joy in the midst of overwhelming adversity. This is why I say regularly, worship ushers in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there's a fullness of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you're strong, you can resist the enemy. When you resist the enemy, he has to leave. And when he leaves, you win. So if you want to win, if you want to get through whatever hell you're going through today, you have to be a worshiper. There is power in worship. So in this vision and value series called Our House, we are unpacking seven core values. In week one, we introduced our mission. Our mission is this. Rock Church is a place where hope is offered, help is given, and Jesus is the foundation. So what do we do? We hand out hope, we hand out help, we hand out Jesus. Everybody say, hope, hope. Help. help, Jesus. That's what we're all about. We offer hope, we offer help, we offer Jesus. Our house, it's a place. It's not only a place, it's also a people. Rock Church is a community who hands out hope, hands out help, hands out Jesus. When people come through our doors, they're going to receive hope. They're going to receive help. They're getting Jesus. Amen? So this morning, the core value that we're going to unpack is full volume worship. So before we get into that, let's do a recap over the last three weeks. All right, the first core value that we introduced, four words, same message, different language. Everybody say, same message, same message. different language. All right, what's, what's that mean? We're communicating the gospel in a way that people can understand. Of course, we're communicating with love, but it can be summed up with this. Methods change, the message doesn't. The way we do church changes. Sometimes the way we approach a service, it changes. We mix up songs. Sometimes we mix up, mix up styles. Sometimes in the middle of a sermon, I will play a song, right? We, we mix it up. Our method isn't important. We have to speak the language of the audience we want to reach. I shared if we were going to hold a service this morning in Mexico, our method would be different. For one, I would have a translator so people could understand. I would have to speak the language of the people if they would receive and respond to the gospel. So same message, different language is this. We're never going to stray from the word of God. We will always teach what the Bible says, even if everyone else doesn't like it. 
We will always stand on the word of God, even when best-selling authors and megachurch pastors say we need to unhinge from the word. When people say, I don't believe that. I have to find my own truth, right? My own truth is a lie. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We will always preach Jesus, always. That message will never change. The Word of God will never change at Rock Church. That's why it's a value. If we're not preaching the Word, we might as well shut the doors. Close it down. Right? Because Jesus is the living Word. Amen? Look at someone next to you and say, He's the living Word. Don't ever forget that. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you let speak to you when it comes to pastors and preachers and teachers. There's so many good ones out there. But there's also some snakes out there that share some things that sound like truth, but in reality, they're lies. And what did Paul say? If you know the word, you won't be deceived by lies that sound like truth. Everybody say, same message, different language. All right, the second core value that we talked about in week in week three was high fives all around. Just, just high five somebody next to you, all right? Give them a high five. High fives all around. Every week when we are finished with our time of worship, what do we do? For one minute, the band jams, and everyone is encouraged to shake hands, to high five, to give somebody a hug, shake their hand, whatever. You're, you're encouraged to go greet somebody, right? High fives all around, that value means this. We're going to celebrate everybody who walks through our doors. We love everybody, period. We love everyone regardless of what they believe. We love everyone regardless of how they behave because Jesus loved us when we were sinners. Amen? We were sinners saved by grace. He came to reach those who know they are sinners, not those who think they are righteous. Jesus said, I came for the sick. All right? But don't look at someone next to you and say, yeah, you're sick. All right? <laughs> High fives all around. Celebrate everybody. You're welcome. Everybody is welcome here. Amen? That, that, we have worked hard over the years to develop a, a, a culture of love in this place. We want everybody just to feel love. And most times when I ask somebody why they ended up coming back a second time or a third time, Usually the answer, I just feel love here. Man, that's cool. That's because of you guys. Give yourselves a hand. Pat yourselves on the back right now. Come on, put your hands together. So last week, I was in Texas. Our student pastor, Corey Vance, he was here to unpack our third core value for the 309, something that you've heard, something that you've seen. We've used the hashtag. We've created graphics with it. It's one of our values for the 309. What's that mean? Not only are we a church that gathers to offer hope, help, and Jesus when we're here on this property, but we exist to communicate to everyone out there that God is for them and that we are for them. Because what did I say earlier? The church is not just a physical relation physical location where we gather to worship, the church is a community of believers that go out there. And we know that when Jesus ascended to heaven, his spirit descended within the believer. So the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in everyone here who's a believer. That means you're the church. You are a rock church. And everywhere you go, whether it's to Kroger or the mall or work, or Texas Roadhouse, it doesn't matter where you go, church is in session if you're there. People are watching. So we want to drive it home that we exist for others. It's our responsibility to represent Jesus and to communicate to a lost and dying 309 region where there's 70,000 unchurched people that there is hope, that there is help, and there's Jesus. Most people aren't against Jesus. They're against people who follow Jesus. 
But if we represent Jesus well, there will be some that respond to the gospel. There will still be people that hate you, that want nothing to do with your church and nothing to do with your Jesus. And Jesus is the one who said that would happen. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He's with us. Amen? That's why he sent his spirit, all right? So one of the, the, th the three things that Corey preached last week were reach up, our relationship with God, reach in, our relationship with ourselves, and then reach out, our relationship with others. That's 4 to 309. So here's the deal. If you hate yourself, you will never be an effective witness for Jesus because Jesus said we have to love our neighbor like we love ourselves. So if you hate yourself, that means you're going to hate your neighbor. But this is why it's reach up first. We get our relationship this way. We get a relationship with God right. He'll help you love yourself, and when you love him and yourself, you will love others. That's what he said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments. And if we get those right, we'll get the other ones right. We don't have to worry about the other ones. We just got to worry about those because everything, all the, the Ten Commandments, if we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we love our neighbors ourselves, guess what? You're not going to murder. You're not going to steal. You're not going to cover your neighbor's wife. You're going to honor God. You're going to worship him. Amen? All right, so this morning, we don't have a lot of time, but our fourth core value is full volume worship. This means we're going to live our faith out loud. This means our worship is not just with our mouth, it's with our heart. Our worship is not just raising our hands during a service. Our worship is servicing others outside these doors. It's living what we believe. So if we're going to clearly define full volume worship, the first thing we need to do is look at the word worship. Now in the dictionary, worship is defined as this. Reverent honor and homage paid to God. It's reverent honor and homage paid to God or any sacred personage, personage, however you want to say it, or to any object. Everybody say object. Regarded as sacred. It's really easy to find out who or what we worship by what we give our money to and who we spend time with, right? Now, God wants to be the center of our worship. He doesn't just want to be the top of our list. Okay, I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to give God my time, and then I'm not going to think about God the rest of the day. No, he wants to be at the center of everything we do all day long. Pray without ceasing, right? He wants our whole life to be one of worship. And there are people, it's really easy for us to make other people and things the object of our worship. But God is a jealous God. and He is the one worthy of our worship. He wants to be the object of our worship. So the most common word for worship literally means to, to, to bend over or to bow down. That is worship. Now, we know that this service today that we're gathered in and this service that people are joining us online, even as they are joining online and for us in the room, this is a worship service. Everything that happens today, it is worship. It's a worship service. And in our worship service... We sing songs, and those songs are an act of worship while we're gathered for the worship service. And Psalms tells us, I already quoted, to put on the garment of praise. It's a sacrifice of praise. And when we, we worship, that will lift a spirit of heaviness. This is why not only do we gather to open the word, we gather to sing. One, because he's worthy. It's not for us. It's for him. And we change our methods so we can clearly communicate to the audience. But ultimately, it's not for anyone but him. We gather to worship him. And we benefit from being in his presence. We benefit from being in his word. That's how our faith expands. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen? So this is a worship service. Now, when it comes to full volume worship, I want to say this. Full volume worship does not mean how loud the volume is on our sound system. It means how loud is the volume of our relationship with God. Not just in this. Now, when we do gather in this room, we should worship. We should sing. All right? I'm in the front row. I don't know who's singing. I don't know who's not singing. I don't know who raises their hands, who's not raising their hands. But I will say this. 
in the book of Psalms, we are commanded to sing, we are commanded to lift our hands, we are commanded to bow down. This is why in a service, people sing, people lift their hands, people bow down, because God is worthy of it. He is worthy of our, re our worship. And if you come and you just stand like this, you're not worshiping. You're welcome. We're going to celebrate you. I'm going to high-five you. I'm going to hug you, but God has so much more for you. And I want to see this place. I, I would love to see every week when the band starts, people can't wait to get in to worship God because he's worthy. They cannot wait to lift their hands, to jump up and down, because I know if you went to a Civic Center at the con if you went to a concert at the Civic Center tonight to hear your favorite musical artist, at some point, you're going to throw your hands in there. You're going to give some woot woots. You're going to clap. I know you're going to, you're going to clap. You're going to sing. Some of you, you have every, your favorite artist. You have every song memorized, but sometimes you come here and you just stand here. And God's not happy. You have made something else the object of your worship. And God is saying, I want to be praised. He is worthy of us lifting our hands, lifting our voices. I mean, next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. You had better believe I am going to be cheering. I'm going to be clapping. I mean, my Cowboys didn't make it again. <laughs> but you better believe I'm going to be rooting against the Eagles. You better believe it. Some of you are going to be for the Eagles. Some of you are going to be for the Chiefs. Some of you are going to be for the commercials. It's all good. You're going to be clapping. All right, you're going to be making noise. Some of you are going to be screaming at the TV. Um, we're going to pray some of you don't break your TV, right? But we know some of us are more passionate than others. Like, I'm a passionate guy. You know that. I won't share the whole story. I've told it 100 times. But I'm the guy who went to a Bulls game, and somebody got so tired of me jumping up and screaming that he threw his drink at me. <laughs> All right? So I, I, I have a good time everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. Here's, my, here's my point. If you're willing to clap and sing or celebrate and throw your hands up at a game or a concert, you need to do it here. And for those of you that say, I'm just not into it, I don't, I, I don't sing, God commands you to sing. Sing unto the Lord. All throughout the psalm, sing to the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. The disciples, they gathered and they sang songs. They sang hymns. Did you know there's a scripture where, where Jesus is literally singing over you? We had better be willing to open our mouth. Be willing. Don't worry what anybody thinks. Look at your hands. He's, he's worthy. Watch what will happen. The spirit of heaviness will be gone. God will do something in your heart. You'll benefit from that. All right? That's one, that's one form of worship. So we know the entire service is worship. We're here to worship God. We worship by singing songs, by raising our hands, by clapping our hands, by bowing down. But here's what a full volume worshiper is. It's somebody who worships by how they live. It goes beyond the room. Because there are people that come and they get their worship on and they jump up and down and they're passionate and they sing and they praise Jesus and they get in the car and they cuss their family out. Right? Or they show up tomorrow at work and they're a jerk to everybody. That's not full volume worship. That's low volume worship. Yeah, that's where God's like, I want to unplug the amplifier, right? We want to live our faith out loud everywhere we go. So when it comes to biblical worship, Jesus laid out himself what a true worshiper is. And a true worshiper, by definition, is a full-volume worshiper. So let me read it, and then we'll close. John chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus said, but the time is coming. He said, indeed, it's here now when true worshipers, everybody say true worshipers. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, everybody say spirit, and truth, everybody say truth. So he said the time is coming, it's already here, when these true worshipers, full volume worshipers, they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. All right, now I just said a lot, because Jesus said a lot. But how many will be honest, and you really don't know what that means? Okay. I read a whole, a, a, many times. It took me a while to really get 
I don't know what he's talking about. Worship in spirit and truth. What does that mean? I read it. I mean, it sounds good. This is cool. I'm, I'm a true worshiper. I'm worship God in spirit and truth. What in the heck does that mean? Right? And I know some of you didn't raise your hand, but you're like, oh, thank God, man. I feel better now. Right? Let's put it in your language. Right? Same message, different language. The message translation lays it out like this. It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. It's who you are. It's the way you live that count before God. Your worship, somebody say my worship, must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth, and he is the truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. So we know that a full volume worshiper, right? True biblical worship, it's, it's who you are and how you live. It's how we live. So this means that we understand who God is, the Godhead, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. We understand who God is, and then we live accordingly. And how do we learn about God the Father? How do we learn about Jesus? How do we learn about the Son? In his word, which is what we're doing this morning. We're learning. Right? We're opening up the Word, and we're searching the Scriptures, and we're finding out that a full-volume worshiper is someone who lives out what they believe with the Word. And we're talking about full-volume worshipers who worship God. There are full-volume worshipers out there who are living what they believe, but it's not the Bible. So in our context, we're asking you to be a full-volume worshiper of Jesus because he is king. He is Lord. Amen? He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. So, full volume worship, now we know it's more than just singing songs. And by the way, we do like to sing them loud. We like to play them loud, right? That's why it's called Rock Church. Jesus is the rock. You know, hey, rock and roll too. But you know what? Jesus is the rock. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't stop it. So we love to come together. We love to worship loud. We love to, to really get into our worship. But... Full volume worship is more than all that. Here's what Paul says. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, Paul says. Take your everyday, ordinary life. He says, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. So this means a full volume worshiper is not somebody who only worships on Sunday. But it's somebody who is worshiping on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Amen. It's somebody who is worshiping God while you work. You're worshiping God when you're in your home. You're worshiping God, God, when you're in line, when you're watching the Super Bowl, when you're at a game. You're worshiping God every day, wherever you go, because your whole life is an act of worship. That is a full volume worshiper. He says, you take all of that. Ordinary life, eating, sleeping, going to work, walking around life, and then you place it before God, right? A weapon, you give it to God. You place it before God as an offering. And, he, and here's what Paul says. This is the result. Well, let me read this first. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Paul says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture. Some say, uh-oh that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. Because if we're totally devoted to God, if we're fixing our thoughts on God, then we're not going to buy what culture is selling. We're going to buy what God is selling. And we're going to believe what God says about us. And we're going to believe what God says about others. And we're not going to be deceived by lies that sound like truth. Why? Because we have fixed our attention on him. Our whole life is one act of worship. We are not worshiping the things the world does. We're worshiping who God is. And the result of that is this. Here's what Paul says. You'll be changed from the inside out. Right, right. Reach up, reach in, reach out. We'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Here's what Paul says. He concludes it with this. Now I'm going to pray. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity 
in you. So you don't have to be on this mission where you follow your heart, you follow feelings, and find your own personal truth. You follow the Word of God. You follow Jesus, and He will reveal Himself to you because He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you had a glimpse of who He created you to be, you won't want to be anybody else. That is a full volume worshiper. I don't have time to un un unpack these, but there are four things I'm just going to give you. And I might come back to these next week. A full volume worshiper, they, worships by, they worship by how they live. Remember, Jesus said some people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So it's not just about us singing songs. It's not about us, what we say. It's about what we do, how we live, right? Number two, full volume worshipers, they're unashamed of Jesus. Paul said he's not ashamed. Number three, full volume worshipers, they are willing to tell others about Jesus. And then number four, a full volume worshiper, they're willing to do life with each other. Because we're going to find out that God created us for community. He does not want you to live this life alone, even though some of you are lonely. So our core value next week is better together. Because God created us to do life with each other, not by yourself. Amen? Amen. Can you stand with me? Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this church. We thank you for your spirit inside of this church. We thank you that as we've read your word, you've expanded our faith. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that today you have revealed some things to some people. I thank you, God, that today you're setting people free. I thank you, God, right now that you are here to move. You are here to show us how real you are. I believe that somebody is getting a healed heart right now. You have been mad at God. You have been angry. And God today has said, I love you. I want you. I need you. And he is just saying, come on home to me. I don't know who that is, but let Jesus embrace you today. God is real. I believe God is restoring relationships right now. Some of you have been praying for your kids. God is moving. Don't you ever give up. God is moving. Things happen when we worship him fully. When we worship him at a full volume, when we live our faith out loud, things happen. God is going to do something in this church like he's never done before. I really believe that. So today, let's get into the flow. Let's crank up the volume. And let's experience his goodness because when the early church did this the result was God added to their church daily God right now I thank you for the service I thank you for what you're doing Holy Spirit you're moving in hearts right now I thank you Jesus that today you're setting some people free we take authority I mean some people you've been bound by lies from the enemy you have bought into lies and God is setting your mind free right now I thank you, God, that we will be who you've created us to be. I thank you that we will worship you in spirit and truth. We will worship you not just with our mouths, but with our hearts. We will worship you by how we live. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, is there anybody here today that would say, Chuck, will you, will you pray for me? I, man, I just, I realize I'm, I'm, I'm far from God. I need to surrender my life to him. I don't even know how. Will you pray for me? If that's you, just put your hand up, put it down. Anybody? Anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Is there anybody here that would be willing to be honest enough? Honest enough just to say, you know what, Chuck? Man. I've either had my volume turned off or it's been really low. And I'm ready to crank it. Will you pray for me? If that's you, just put your hand up, put it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of hands. I know people watch it at home. God's moving in your house. He's moving in your apartment. He's moving in your heart. Jesus, I thank you for what you've done on this special day. I thank you for those who have been willing to acknowledge where they're at. I thank you, Jesus. There's no shame here. There's no condemnation. Jesus said in you, there's no condemnation. I thank you, God, that, that you love us enough today to speak to us. So today, we surrender our life to you. Everybody say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today, I repent. I'm running to you. 
I'm embracing you. I believe in you. I surrender my life to you. Be the Lord of my life. Not just my Savior, but my Lord. Because of my confession, because of my faith, I am saved. I am a full volume worshiper. Help me to live out my faith. And may I always crank it up. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's thank God for what he's done in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.